it's the knave and child. Hey, aren't you supposed to be in Snezhnaya recuperating? What are you still doing in Fontaine? Oh, it's you two. I didn't expect to run into you here. <laughs> I was unconscious for quite a while after the fight in the Primordial Sea. After I woke up, I realized I was being taken back to Snezhnaya, and well... I couldn't have that now, could I? Not when I've still got unfinished business here in Fontaine. So, I mustered up all my strength and made the journey back on my own. What sort of unfinished business are we talking here? It has to do with Skirk, my master. I really wanted to meet up with her, but by the time I got back, she had already left. I still have so many questions for her. Without any other leads, all I could do was ask the knave to help me track her down. She must have left behind some traces from her time in Fontaine. Oh, okay, so have you found any clues? Unfortunately, no. While the House of the Hearth is adept at collecting all manner of intelligence, certain existences can still manage to escape our purview. Basically, unless Master feels there's a need to meet with me, she's not going to be found. But that problem has an easy fix. I just need to become stronger, and then... <coughs> uh, Paimon thinks you should focus on getting better first. <laughs> the worst of it is over. It's all thanks to that one kid from the House of the Hearth. Elwar, I think her name was. She gave me a bunch of random potions to drink. They didn't go down easy, let me tell you. Pain and chills all over. But they really did help speed up my recovery. And that's good, because it looks like I really do have to head back this time. The old man's been putting the pressure on me. He sent someone to tell me I'm needed for some sort of project. Project Stuja? Yeah, that's the one. I heard Regrater's involved, too. I'm not looking forward to having to listen to all his monologuing, that's for sure. Hey, maybe you could think of a way for me to stay in Fontaine for a little longer. Helping Linny and the others brush up on their fighting skills would be far more interesting. If you and I could spar, that would be even better. I've been waiting for a chance to see you go all out. And what a sweet little daydream that is. But I also have a role to play in all this. I'll be leaving Fontaine shortly as well. Besides, considering how little they see fit to step outside the homeland, being called on to return to Snezhnaya by such illustrious dignitaries. What a great honor. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> One I could do without, I'd say. Uh, is it just Paimon? Or does it kind of seem like they're... So, dear guests of the House of the Hearth, to what do I owe the visit? Um, well, we just... Um, right! We're super close to Linny and the others, but we still don't know much about you! Is that so? Introductions have already been made, have they not? Oh, uh, well, you see... There's only so much you can learn about someone from a short introduction. At least tell us something a little extra, like... Why do you call yourself father? Huh, good question. I'd also like to know. The fact that you have to ask tells me our intelligence work has been quite successful. Telling you the answer to that question would only serve to undermine that success. And we can't have that, now can we? Spoken like a true diplomat. That was some expert sidestepping right there. Well, if there's nothing else, I think I'll take my leave. I still have a small matter to resolve at home. Uh, uh wait, do you go? <laughs> I'd also like to hear the answer to this. I've met some of the members of your organization, and they all seemed like really good kids. They actually reminded me of Tonya and Tusser. Which, by the way... If you ever betray them, I'm just letting you know, I won't let you off easy. And why would I betray them? Well, you've already betrayed the House of the Hearth once, haven't you? At least, that's what I heard. Hmm. Okay, okay, I admit. That's just what the old man told me. The rooster, I mean. Well, wait, did you really 
do something bad to those kids? Never mind what I've done. I'm more curious as to what the mighty rooster had to say. Care to enlighten me? Ah, well, nothing much. Just some stuff about you taking out many other members of the House of the Hearth, and even going so far to attack your own family. Hmm. I see. Huh. Based on your reaction, I'm guessing it's all a bunch of lies. Hardly. I don't appreciate his particular turns of phrase, but I suppose he didn't say anything untrue. Although, it would be more accurate to say that there is a certain level of prejudice involved, but I don't intend to clear that up just yet. Prejudice has a funny way of concealing the real truth behind certain things, an attribute that I find to be quite advantageous. Call yourself a Fontanian, for example, and people will assume all sorts of things, when the real truth is that this is simply the land where I was raised. Huh? You're not actually from Fontaine? But then why did you try to help out with the prophecy and everything? I was trying to protect the children born in Fontaine. Claiming that I myself was a Fontanian simply made it easier to operate. People would hardly suspect a fellow Fontanian of having any ulterior motives. Who wouldn't want to save their homeland after all? The Primordial Sea wouldn't have any effect on me, but it would have caused great harm to the House of the Hearth. Well, you wanted extra information, didn't you? There you go. I hope that satisfied your curiosity. So, you stayed in Fontaine for the kids. I guess I was wrong to believe you'd betray them. Apologies. Looks like I was holding on to some prejudices myself. Good. Like I said, I like it when others have misconceptions of me. Actually, while I was recuperating at the House of the Hearth, there was something else that really caught my attention. I heard that members always resolve disputes and arguments with a friendly spar, and the loser has to back down. Seems pretty cool if you ask me. Would also give them plenty of opportunities to hone their skills. Well, that's only a recent development. In the past, such spars weren't nearly so... friendly. The losing party would lose everything, including their life. They were that high stakes? Whew, at least that's not a thing anymore. Well, the current atmosphere's not half bad. I'm a bit jealous, actually. You've got so many family members around you, and you even get to live with them. Having a lot of family around means dealing with a considerable amount of bickering and scheming. Once Tonya and Tusser enter their rebellious phase, I'm sure you'll understand. Just imagine. Tusser becomes obsessed with plucking out strands from the rooster's mustache, or Tonya decides to dye her hair 42 different colors. Okay, okay. I get the picture. Uh, well, would you look at the time? I should probably get going. Traveler, Paimon, I'm not sure where our paths will cross next, but the next time we run into each other, we should definitely try and find some time to spar. <coughs> um, again, maybe this is a conversation we can have when you look less like you're gonna kill over. All right, all right. Well, thanks for everything, Arlecchino. No thanks necessary. You also played a part in obtaining the Gnosis. I would say we can call ourselves even. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Well, I'm off. See you all some other time. Um, we should probably get going too. Do you want to head back with us? Oh, you want me to leave so soon? Oh, I... Well, well you see, um... I'm rather enjoying the evening breeze. If you don't mind, I think I'll stick around for a bit. I have some things to think about. Apologies for not attending to you like a proper host. Please forgive this slight. I do hope you'll have a pleasant stay. Lenny, how did everything go? Well, long story short, we ran into a small issue. Clairvy can't go into the sunlight. Everything was fine at first. She followed me up to the surface just like I told her. But as I led her out of the shadows and into the sunlight, she vanished. 
I turned around and there she was, standing at the edge of the shadows, silently watching me. Huh. Maybe she's afraid of sunlight, or... No, it wouldn't be her wish if that were the case. Hmm. Well, we could always try pushing her into it. Oh, true. I've pretty much tried it all already. Nothing worked. Eventually, the sun went down, so all I could do was bring her back here. <sighs> How did it go with you, Lynette? Good. I've got the list. It's right here. Really? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's take a look! Oh, that's a lot of pages. Oh, it's gonna take forever to get through it all. We can each take a section. Here. La Pouillade, Langlois, Jean-Bel, Aurere. Oh, yikes. That Aurere guy has a huge scar on his face. He's kind of giving Pime on the creeps. Ah, I've met him before. The scar is from an injury he received during a mission. <laughs> I still remember him joking with me about it. He said any future lover would take one look at him and then lose all interest. Did he say anything else? Well, I asked if there was someone he was interested in. He said no, and that's where our conversation ended. It was only later that I learned he really did have someone he liked. He risked everything to escape so he could be with her, but... It didn't work. One day, Father asked to see him, and... Well... I never saw him again after that. Wait, so that means the knave, she... It may seem cruel, but it's just one of the rules of the house. Betrayal is not to be taken lightly. We know too many secrets to come and go as we please. So if you do try to leave, you pay with your life. Her name's not here, huh? Well, that's not too surprising. It doesn't seem like this list is complete. It only contains records dating back around five years. Let's shift our attention, then. Fremini, were you able to find anything out? <sighs> Fremini. Uh, uh, sorry. I was thinking about something. I managed to talk to quite a few people but I couldn't help but notice that the atmosphere in the house was a little... strange. Strange? Yeah, I mean, I know there have been arguments in the past, times when people haven't gotten along. Chaplot and Filial are a good example of that. Oh, those are two of the people that we met while delivering supplies! Paimon can see how they might not get along. They had very different vibes, and their, um, interests seem to be pretty different as well. That's to be expected, actually. Father brought us all here, shared her knowledge with us, taught us how to fight. That's one thing we all share. But that's also where the similarities end. Not all of us feel the same desire to stay here. As members of the House of the Hearth, we're also considered part of the Fatui. And to a lot of people, that's an identity they never asked for. Certain members get older and realize they want something else for themselves. But considering the rules of the House, most people would never say that out loud. People like Chaplot and Foltz are loyal to Father and her vision. They're proud to be part of the Fatui. Filial and Nantoy, on the other hand, well, they aren't quite as enthusiastic. These kinds of conflicts have always been there. It's not like Father is in the dark about any of this. Well, that's true. But it just feels like things have gotten worse lately. Filial and the others, it seemed like they were meeting in secret to talk about something. I can't say for sure, but I think they've met Clairvy. You think she's been inciting them to act out? No, not exactly. But I wouldn't be surprised if she said something to them about... the darkness in the house. 
and how deep it runs. She's told me about it before. Experiments being run on children. People being used as pawns on the battlefield without so much as the strength to survive. And they just believed all that? Without any evidence? Clarivy's words probably gave them the excuse they were looking for. Whether they actually believe them to be true is secondary. <sighs> this is all because of Project Stuja, isn't it? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. What's this Project Stuja all about, huh? This is the second time it's come up now. Sorry, but I'm not sure of the details either. I only know what Father has told us, which is that it's something the Rooster and Regrader have been working on together. Apparently, it has to do with the Fatui's strategic plan for the future. Because the House of the Hearth was so successful in obtaining the Gnosis, we now have the honor of playing a key role in Project Stuja. Wait, but isn't that a good thing? Key role is just another way of saying dangerous role. To us, the whole thing is an inconvenience. Father thinks so too, but she's in no position to refuse. Their plan isn't exactly unreasonable, and they've been funneling the house a lot of funding. It's just that... we'll lose a lot of members in the process. Participating in the plan... It's an honor in name only. What they're really trying to do is subdue us. The existence of an intelligence organization outside their control makes them feel uneasy. Okay, super complicated top secret Fatui business aside, what does all of this have to do with the conflicts you were talking about earlier? Bimek doesn't get the connection. External pressure has a way of exacerbating internal strife. You can't overlook the power of fear either. People are afraid of dying, and that fear is often the impetus for a lot of stupid decisions. I thought resolving the Clairvy situation would make everything go back to normal. But it looks like things are more complicated than I thought. If we leave Filiol and the others to their own devices, sooner or later, Father will be forced to take action. We can only focus on one situation at a time, brother. You're right. Even if we confront Filial and the others, it won't do any good. It might even make matters worse. We should focus on Clairvy for now. Well, it's getting late. We should head back and get some rest. We'll try again first thing tomorrow. Lynette, you stick with me this time. Fremine, keep a close eye on Filial and the others. Make sure they don't do anything they'll regret. Good work today, everyone. Have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, I'm always looking forward to an early night, but she can't sleep at all. I, uh, hey, you don't think the knave will be too angry with Linny and everyone if she finds out about all this, do you? She's even scary when she smiles. If she were to actually get angry... Ooh, you have to protect Paimon if that happens, okay, Traveler? Oh, well, in that case, we should just plan on running away. We'll grab Linny and the others, and we can make a break for it as fast as we can. <gasps> Look! Look over there! Quick, let's catch up with her before anyone sees! Clearly! Shh! I opened the window while no one was looking. Look how pretty the outside is. If only I could have more than this. You probably think I'm being silly, huh? All this hopeless resisting? It's better to dream of what I could have than try to make it a reality, right? Please, help us get on the same page here, Clary. We need you to tell us what you know. Can you do that? Sure. Although, after you hear all this, I think you might regret that decision. Everyone in this family is nothing more than a tool, something to be used and exploited. We're all expendable, including me. As long as you're useful, you get to stick around. Lose your value, and you're handed over to the doctor, experimented on, and given a fate worse than death. 
I've seen it happen again and again, and I've had enough. You're saying the knave did all that? It's just, that doesn't seem like something she would do. Uh, she's scary and all, but it seems like even she has lines she wouldn't cross. Hm. I knew you wouldn't believe me. Everyone thinks she's a good person. They all think of her like a real mother. Mother? But she doesn't deserve that title. She's disgraced it and tarnished it. And if I had things my way, I'd never see her again. If only Perry were here, she'd understand. Perry? There's that name again. Also, Paimon's getting a strange feeling. It almost feels like she's not really here with us. Paimon can't tell if she's actually talking to us or if she's mistaken us for someone else. Mm. Well, in any case, it seems like she really needs someone to talk to. We should keep her company for a little longer. She looks so young, but it seems like she's been through a lot. <sighs> it's getting windy. I should close the window. Ooh, look at the moon. Isn't it pretty? Hey, wanna hear a secret? I heard that if you look up at the night sky in Shnezhnaya, you can see the aurora. It's supposed to be super pretty. Even prettier than the moon tonight. Perry and I promised each other that once we're older, we're gonna go see it together. But I can't find her. I'm worried she's all soupin. No, that wouldn't happen to her. She's special. Mother likes her a lot. I should really go talk to Mother, but we just fought. She doesn't want to see me, and I'm too scared to face her. What should I do? <sighs> Ima really doesn't understand what's going on with her. Well, let's head back. We've got an early morning tomorrow. All right, looks like we're all here. Let's go ahead with the plan. Oh? What is it? What makes you ask that? Well, we kind of ran into Clairview last night, and that's what she told us. We met the doctor back in Sumeru. He's super dangerous, and he's done all sorts of bad things. It's possible that Father and the Doctor have had certain dealings, but I don't think Father would work with him. We're not really on the same side, so there's not a lot of trust between them. That doesn't exactly set the stage for a successful partnership. I did hear, though, that when Father first became a harbinger, the Doctor offered to work with the House of the Hearth. Father rejected most of his proposals, except for one— it had to do with some sort of secret experiment. Secret experiment? Could that be what Clairvy was talking about? Hmm, I don't think so. I don't know any details about the experiment itself, but I do know it's an entirely independent operation. The doctor only proposed a direction for the research. That was the extent of his involvement. I still don't think that counts as working together. The details of the experiment are confidential, but complete records are kept on all participants. That doesn't seem to be the case with the situation Clairvy referred to. I know you don't agree with some of the Fatui's methods, and I'm not asking you to. But I am asking you to trust us on this. The House of the Hearth has its own principles. There are certain lines we're not willing to cross. <sighs> all right, that's good to hear at least. Clarvy seems to think the Knave and the Doctor worked together to do something horrible. If that turned out to be true, Paimon doesn't know how he would even face you guys. It's just that it doesn't seem like Clarvy is lying either. The easiest thing to do would be just ask the Knave directly, but Paimon doesn't think she'd tell us. Father didn't come back last night. She's probably still near the shore. We'll be counting on you to distract her. Lynette, you're with me. Fremenet, you know what to do. 
Be on your guard, everyone. All right, let's get to it. Ah, oh, it's you two again. I must say, you look a bit pale. Did you have trouble sleeping last night? Uh, a little. Perhaps if you had less on your mind, you'd be able to absolve yourself of such troubles. So what are you planning to do now? Catch up on some sleep? Or should I give you some time to rack your brain for a topic to discuss before I ask any questions? Although I must profess to being curious. Without child here, how do you plan on distracting me? Us? Distract you? <laughs> a g good one. But no, um, we were just here for a chat. Hmm. Looks like you could have used some extra time to think. No matter. If you don't have any other plans, why don't you accompany me somewhere? Don't worry. I'll be sure to steer clear of any scheming children. <sighs> the ocean breeze is sure nice today. Children always think they can hide things from the grown-ups. But nothing gets past me. Least of all a little scheming. I think I'll let them have at it for a little longer. I can be very patient. Well, I'll leave you to think things over. If you're so inclined, meet me outside the Palais Mermonia. Good things come to children who do as they're told. So I do hope you decide to tag along, if only for your friends' sakes. What should we do? She clearly knows about everything we've been doing, and Paimon doesn't think it'd be a stretch to say she was threatening us just now. Oh, good idea. Hopefully he sees it in time. Well, we should probably head to the Palais Mermonia. Paimon doesn't want to find out what happens if we don't show up. Based on what the knave was saying just now, it sure didn't seem like it'd be anything good. Okay, then we probably shouldn't keep her waiting. It seems like Linny and the others are on thin ice, so let's do our best to not get them in any more trouble. Seeing as we still have some time before my meeting, we might as well enjoy some pleasant conversation while we wait. I'm glad to see you get along with my children. Being surrounded by good companions is necessary for a child's development. You're not planning on doing anything to them, are you? I assume you're referring to Lenny, Lynette, and Fremine. Although, there's that situation with Filial and Nentoy as well. Hmm. It appears quite a few people have been acting out lately. No matter. I'm not one to discriminate. All those who betray the house meet the same fate. There are no exceptions. Does that mean you're going to kill them? Oh, are you here to beg for their lives? I'm sorry to disappoint, but the rules of the house change for no one. In my organization, everyone is responsible for their own actions. But don't you care about them at all? They really respect you. They even call you father. You must feel something for them. Any organization in which feelings come before principles is one destined for ruin. The House of the Hearth is hardly an exception. You could say our principles are more stringent than most. Perhaps I can offer you this consolation at least. As our guests, you two will not be held accountable along with them. I would imagine Linny, Lynette, and Fremenet will be able to keep their lives. As for Filial, Nantoy, and the others, I'm afraid there's little I can do. They can try to escape, but once you know our secrets, there's no getting out alive. But... but that's... that's... that's awful! Ah, you seem concerned. Out of consideration for my guests, I suppose I could turn a blind eye for a little longer. If Linny and the others manage to dispose of Claire V in the meantime, all evidence of their wrongdoing will be lost. In that case, I could hardly punish them for something I couldn't prove. If their efforts are unsuccessful, on the other hand, all will be held accountable. And the punishment will be severe. Of course. Oh, and here, I believe this belongs to you. Do try and keep better track of it next time. It takes a considerable amount of time to train a bird like this. It would be such a pity if you were to lose it. Permanently. Wait, where did you get that? Well, 
I'm afraid that's all the time we have to chat. Now, for the matter at hand. I asked you to meet me here because I have business at the Palais Mermonia. It has nothing to do with you, but I think it would be prudent for you to stick by my side for the time being. There will always be time later to run off and tell Linny what you've learned. Well, time to go. Looks like we wrapped things up just in time. It's been a while, Monsieur Nervalette. I must say, I wasn't expecting my meeting request to be approved quite so quickly. The Palais Mermonia operates with an efficiency worthy of admiration. It is only right that an esteemed diplomat such as yourself should be afforded the proper level of respect. Although, if I may speak plainly, I must confess that I did not anticipate we would have the occasion to meet again after presenting you with the Gnosis. I see you've brought the Traveler and Paimon with you as well. If I may inquire as to the purpose of your visit. I'll be departing Fontaine shortly. There is, however, an outstanding matter that I would like to see resolved before I go. It requires a rather lengthy explanation, I'm afraid. So I took the liberty of explaining everything in this proposal. Please review it at your leisure, Monsieur Nevelette. Hmm. I understand your request. However, at the risk of causing offense, I must admit that I fail to see why you would wish for such a thing. I heard you have a certain fondness for water tasting, Monsieur Nervalette, so allow me to use water as an analogy. A family is like a large body of water with countless rivers flowing in and out. As someone who watches over this system, I would hope that each river that flows from the source will eventually reach the ocean. Of course, objectively speaking, I know this is impossible. Most of the rivers will dry up along the way, disappearing into the ground and leaving nothing but a barren riverbed behind. Not all rivers are destined to reach the ocean, but I would not see their existence rendered meaningless. I believe the water that flows within them is simply meant for a different destination, like a field in need of irrigation. Or perhaps the glass of a certain water-tasting enthusiast. Um, did you get any of that, Traveler? Your words paint an optimistic picture indeed. Allow me to remind you, however, few among us are willing to sip from a glass filled with tainted water. It may have been tainted at one point in time, but not to worry. I'll make sure it's strained of all impurities and returned to its cleanest form. Hmm. I seem to recall there being a transactional aspect to your proposal. Perhaps you could expound on that? If you accept my proposal, Monsieur Nevelet, I will gradually withdraw my forces from Fontaine. And, unless absolutely necessary, I will no longer carry out any special missions within Fontaine. I presume I can take your words to mean that, in the future, cases similar to the Tartuffe assassination will cease to cross my desk? Tartuffe? Ah, that thief who embezzled funds from all those charities, you mean? My deepest condolences to his family, but without any evidence, I cannot imagine how the House of the Hearth might have been involved in his passing. Of course, if you accept my proposal, Monsieur Nervalet, I'm sure certain measures could be taken to reduce the frequency of such troubles. You choose your words carefully, indeed. In that case, I am inclined to accept your proposal. My thanks for your generosity, Monsieur Nervalet. Well, with that settled, we should be going now. I took the liberty of bringing along two bottles of spring water from Snezhnaya for you to enjoy. I do hope I get the chance to hear your impressions. Perhaps at our next meeting? Yes? Indeed. I trust you would not overlook your commitment in the meantime. All right, Traveler Paimon. Time to go. So, uh, what exactly were you talking about back there? Paimon only heard you mention some rivers, a large body of water, and then some kind of irrigation scheme. You really want to know? I would imagine there might be more pressing concerns at the moment. Uh, Linny, Paima really hopes everything's going okay. Oh, Paima recognizes that look. 
You've got your thinking cap on, don't you, Traveler? Uh. <clears throat> oh, shoot. Are you all right? Oh, jeez, I'm so sorry. I was so focused on selling these papers, I wasn't looking where I was going. Well, let me make it up to you at least. Here, take this paper. On the house. Oh, you don't have to give us anything. Please, I want to. It's not like I'm short on supply. All the extras will be useless come tomorrow anyway. It's my fault, really. I was just trying to bring home some extra mora for the family, but I bit off more than I can chew. I haven't had many takers today, so I'm still swimming in papers. What's going on here? Uh, nothing much. Uh, I just ran into your friend here on accident. I should probably get going, actually, so... Hold on. Um, of course, I'm happy to compensate you with Mora. It's just... I don't have any on me at the moment. I'll take three papers. Here. Your payment. Oh! Thank you for your patronage. May the Archons bless you with good fortune. If only I had the chance to run into such generous customers every day. <laughs> I should probably just take on a smaller inventory, though, right? I'm getting married soon, so sometimes it's hard to not get ahead of myself. Anyway, I should head out. Goodbye! Well, now that my affairs are settled, we should take the boat back to Poisson. We've even acquired some light reading to enjoy along the way. Actually, why don't we... Uh... Stick around for a little longer. Uh, Paimon just realized how hungry she is. She can't head back to Poisson on an empty stomach. It appears you two are under the impression that delaying our return will somehow alter the situation in your favor. I'm sorry to ruin your fantasy, but your efforts are meaningless. That being said, I could be persuaded to give Linny some extra time. I just have one condition. If you agree to my request, I'll even answer some of your questions. You're quite curious about Claire V, are you not? And my relationship to her. Wait, why are you being so generous all of a sudden? You're not gonna ask us to do something bad, are you? You overestimate yourself. You don't have the talent for bad things. The most important consideration in a negotiation is that both sides receive something they want. Demands and threats only get you so far. Wonderful. Here it is. When the time comes, make the choice that you deem most appropriate in the situation, and lend your help to the House of the Hearth. Okay. Sounds normal enough. But what do you mean, when the time comes? When is that supposed to be? That is for you to decide. Then we have a deal. Follow me. What is this place? Somewhere long forgotten by everyone. It used to be a grand building. Now it's nothing more than a pile of rubble. No one comes here anymore. Nor does anyone care about what once happened here. Although... This place does have something to do with the story I'm about to tell you. It was before I became a harbinger, and before Linny and the others joined the House of the Hearth. Due to certain events, I first killed Clairvy and then her mother. And this is where it all happened. You were the one that killed Clairvy? Patience now. Allow me to explain Clairvy's side of the story first. I'll start from the beginning. Claire V was six years old when she was brought by her mother, Crucibina, to live in the house of the hearth. From the outside, it seemed like a fairy tale. A thriving family made up of kind adults and friendly children. Crucibina was the knave at that time, and the house of the hearth was under her control. She was Claire V's mother by blood, but she was also the mother to all the children in the house. Claire V was happy here, for a time. But she quickly realized that being part of this family wasn't a fairy tale at all. It was a kind of purgatory. 
purgatory? Exactly. The House of the Hearth takes in war orphans from all over to Vat. But as for how to raise them, that depends entirely on the person in charge. Crucibina came up with a novel idea. She would teach the children to fight, force them to duel each other, and then crown as the king of the house the child who proved themselves most worthy of inheriting her title. It's difficult to estimate the number of children who died or were maimed in the process. There's little I can say about the ones who died. The ones that emerged with permanent injuries, on the other hand, well, they still served a purpose. They would be handed over to the doctor to be experimented on, or sent away on dangerous missions. Nothing more than tools to be used and then discarded. So those were the experiments Clairvy was talking about. But what actually happened to her? You said that Clairvy was Crucibina's daughter, so if Clairvy tried to convince her to stop what she was doing, Crucibina probably would have listened, right? Despite being Clairvy's mother, Crucibina cared little for her daughter. She forced Clairvy to join the House of the Hearth only as a means to demonstrate her own impartiality as a mother, to prove that she treated all her children equally. Clairvy did try to convince her mother to change her ways, but it was to no avail. After her efforts failed, the only other option was to rise up and try to fight back. Unfortunately, the other children had already been thoroughly indoctrinated into the illusion of happiness Crucibina had created. Of course, there was one exception. Good day. Someone Clairvy's age, who knew the truth about the House of the Hearth. Her name was Peruware. Wait, the friend that Clairvy mentioned? Friend, huh? I suppose we can call her that for now. Clairvy was a cheerful and passionate person with a tenacious spirit. Peruware, on the other hand, was rather cold-blooded. Her cold-blooded nature allowed her to see through Crucibina's facade. Yet, it was also this cold-bloodedness that prevented her from acting against it. At least at first. While Clairvy longed for freedom, Peruware was convinced that, amid all the fighting and violence, she would make it until the end. Despite their differences, the two became fast friends, united by their knowledge of the truth. Clairvy told Peruware that she hoped to create a real family, where no one would be killed or sacrificed. There may have been a certain naivete to her ideas, but Clairvy proved her determination many times over. She tried countless times to run away, ask for help, or expose the truth. But her efforts only earned her beating after beating. The only thing that kept her going was her strength of will. Even with her body racked with pain, she would still stand on her tiptoes and open the window at night. She and Peruware would look out at the moon together, a fierce longing for freedom shining in her eyes. But one day that light simply vanished. Oh no. What happened? Her hopelessness resulted from a culmination of things. Ten years had passed. Ten years worth of failure after failure. She and Peruere weren't children anymore, but finding any chance to escape still seemed as hopeless as ever. It was during this time that Peruere suggested a new plan. If escaping was out of the question, why not take down the very person sitting on top of this throne of lies? Mother herself. Clairvy rejected that proposal. She claimed that as a famous harbinger, Crucibina possessed an unimaginable amount of power. Trying to kill her would have an incredibly low chance of success. Clairvy never gave another reason, but Peruware could see it written all over her face. Clairvy still thought of Crucibina as her mother. Killing her own flesh and blood was a line she couldn't bring herself to cross. If she couldn't escape and fight back, then only one option remained. Precisely. Death was the only way that she felt she could be free. It happened during a duel. 
When she arrived at the dueling ring that day, her partner turned out to be none other than Perouer, the very person that had stood by her side all those years. It was a fierce battle. But ultimately, Clairvy decided to let Perouer end her life. From that moment on, Perouer's journey was one written in flames. When the rain finally came and washed it all away, there she stood, the sole victor in Mother's endless game of slaughter, a trail of corpses strewn across her path to success. It was the very result she had predicted ten years prior. Even then, she believed she would make it until the end. She wasn't surprised by the fact that she emerged as Mother's undisputed heir. Rather, her success left her with an inexplicable sense of restlessness. She was unsettled. And there was only one thing that could quell that sensation. Perhaps you two would like to take a guess as to what it was? Who's Sabina, you mean? But... But... Correct. This is the place where Perouer killed her best friend. A mere year later, this is also the place where she fought tooth and nail to kill the mother they shared. The moment she acted, any conception of what was right or wrong ceased to matter. It's one of the principles of the house. Only those who survive get to write the rules. Perouer won the battle and became a harbinger herself. After which her majesty, the Tsaritsa, bestowed upon her a new name. Arlecchino. So the Perry Clairvy was talking about, it was you all along. Your Perilware. Arlecchino is just a name you got later. I left that name behind long ago. I must say, hearing it now does bring back memories. After I defeated Crucibina, the moniker of Mother died with her. I chose to forego the title she called herself and even chose to give up my own name. I rebuilt the House of the Hearth under a new identity, not only as Arlecchino, but as father. And that is where the story ends. Any more questions? Yeah. Based on what you just told us, Clairvy wasn't a little kid when she was killed. So the Clairvy we met. Was she really a spirit at all? I suppose you could call her an illusion born of flame. Her existence is like ashes to a fire. Something left over in the wake of blaze and ruin. You see, a certain power runs through my veins. It's not unlike a curse. My flames leave behind shadows of anything they consume. Of course, the chances of those shadows morphing into a sentient entity are exceedingly slim. Clairvy is a very special case. Clairvy died when she was sixteen years old, but what emerged from the flames was her six-year-old self. Her appearance wasn't the only thing affected. Most of her memories were lost to the blaze as well. Memory is a mysterious thing indeed. Losing a portion of your memories will alter your sense of self. Lose ten years' worth, however. And it would be like living in the past. Like returning to a version of yourself that... never grew up. No wonder Paimon got such a weird feeling when we were talking to her. Perhaps I should put it this way. Claire V is someone trapped in time. It may seem like she exists with us in the present, but she truly lives in the confines of her own past. So if all of that is true, then you must have known about Claire V for a long time. Indeed. She's a rather volatile and unstable entity. Sometimes she would look after the children. She's even saved some of their lives. But other times, she would hide from me and become obsessed with revealing the truth about the house to anyone who will listen. 
Shadows don't have the capacity to learn or grow. Any new information they encounter is quickly forgotten over time. Your attempts to expose Clairvy to sunlight. They failed, yes? The reason is actually quite simple. In Clairvy's mind, the house is impossible to escape. And it is this very perception that traps her there. But, no matter. All I have to do is kill her again and all will be resolved. I don't anticipate so much as a single speck of ash will be left behind this time. Wait! Paimon can understand why you might want her gun, but isn't there another way? So what if she's trapped in her six-year-old self? She's still your friend! At least talk to her first! It's too late for that. She broke the rules, and now she must be punished. That goes for Filial and Nantoy as well. She's had quite the effect on them. I hope you understand the difference between Crucibina and myself lies in our formulation of the rules, not our policy for enforcing them. Upholding the rules without question is a trait we both share, because that is how a household should be run. <sighs> is this really what you want to do? Whatever could you mean? Don't you want to say a proper goodbye at least? Whether as a killer or as a father, there are two things that must be avoided at all costs. Anger and sorrow. Anger makes you impulsive. Sorrow causes you to waver. Well, it appears it's about time to proceed. Before we arrived, I told some of my well-behaved children to bring our troublemakers here by nightfall. I do believe I've kept my end of the deal. I give your friends quite a bit more time. As for what happens now, we'll just have to wait and see. Here they are, Father. Ah, oh, you gonna execute them? Seeing something like that would actually be a first for me. Lenny! I'm sorry. I heard about how you helped buy us more time. But I still failed. I couldn't find a way to fulfill her wish. Huh? Are you... Perry? Indeed, it's been a while, Clairvy. Perry! Shh, shh, stay right there. I'm sorry to postpone our reunion, but first I believe certain scores need settling. Father, let me explain. Out of my way. Father! You chose to conceal a threat to the house. And for that, you must be punished. Overall, however, I suppose your wrongdoing is hardly the most egregious of the bunch, so I'll deal with your punishments later. As for right now, the more pressing concerns are the traitors among us. By traitors? Do you mean us? Father, let me explain. We didn't mean to... Fultz, why don't you share what you heard? Yes, Father. Secret Midnight Meeting Number Three. Participants, Filial, Nantoy, Sato, Tati. Nantoy clearly said, if only Father wasn't the one who took us in. Sato added, I'm sick of this life. I just want to live as a normal person. Filial was the worst of them all. She called us crazies and said a bunch of mean things about Father. I did not! You're... you're lying! Fultz is trying to frame us! It's not like I'm the only one who heard those things. After that, you and Toddy and a bunch of other people started talking about Claire V. You were using all those things Claire V brought up as an excuse to question Father. We're birds locked in a cage! The only way out is to destroy it! That's what you said, wasn't it? You little... You just want me gone, don't you? What did I ever do to you, huh? And you, Shaplo, have you forgotten who stood by your sickbed, watched over you, and changed your dressings? Come on, let's hear it then. What's your reason for all this? <clears throat> You're wrong, Filial. We don't want you to die. You're our family. Liar. You wouldn't be doing this if that were the case. So why? 
Why have you backed us into a corner? We all live in the house of the hearth. You know the type of work we do, Filial. A single betrayal can cost dozens of us our lives. It's not like it's never happened before. That kind of thing is hard to forget. That's why the House of the Hearth cannot tolerate any form of betrayal. Ever since we came to Poisson, you've had seven secret meetings. A lot of the things you talked about really crossed the line. You've been spying on us for half a month? Wait a second. Now that I think about it, the move to Poisson was just a way to make it easier to spy on us, wasn't it? Because we were all in one place. You've had this planned all along. Filial, Nantoy, I'm sorry. I owe you both my life. I owe Claire V too. If it weren't for all your help after I got poisoned, I wouldn't be standing here today. If this were any other situation, I would do anything to repay that kindness, even if it cost me my life. But <sighs> rules are rules. I'm sorry. My hands are tied. Why? <laughs> Why? That's enough, Filial. We made a mistake. And we should own up to it. We broke the rules, plain and simple. And now we have to face the consequences. I'm sorry, Chaplot. Fultz. I'm sorry, Father. We accept our punishment. Chaplot, according to the rules of the House of the Hearth, how should these traitors be punished? All those who betray the house pay with their lives. And so it shall be. <laughs> Father, please wait! Something you want to say, Linny? Please reconsider, Father. What Filial and the others did, does it really count as betrayal? We all come from broken families. From the very first day we joined the House of the Hearth, we wanted nothing more than to make it a real home. But the truth is, none of us know what a real home should look like. I'm not saying I have all the answers. All I know is this. Killing Filial and the others may uphold the rules, but doing so will only bring us further away from being a real family than we've ever been. So please, Father, please reconsider. I agree with Linny. Father, please. Linny, you... <sighs> I also agree with Linny. <sighs> An order once given cannot be rescinded. However, given the extent of your determination, I suppose we shall have to go about this a different way. Draw your weapons and face me. Our weapons? Father, are you referring to a duel? Precisely. The rules of the house will not be altered. Traitors must be punished. However, resolving disputes with a duel is also one of our rules, one that also applies to me. Demonstrate a sufficient showing of strength, and I shall offer a concession. Wait. Bede. Father in a duel? Impossible. Father is way too strong, even for Linny. Did you hear that, Traveler? Linny and the others have to duel the knave. What should we do? Can they really win something like that? If they lose, those people from the house are really going to be executed. Hey, are you listening? Don't you want to say a proper goodbye at least? Anger makes you impulsive. Sorrow causes you to waver. Looking at that expression on her face, she seems really serious about this. Guess that means there's no chance she's throwing the duel on purpose, huh? When guests are around, families are often on their best behavior. And any disputes are less likely to escalate. 
When the time comes, make the choice that you deem most appropriate in the situation, and lend your help to the House of the Hearth. What's wrong, Traveler? Hey, where are you going? Traveler? You are asking to join the duel against the Knave? I'll allow it. We do have a ready-made dueling ring at our disposal, after all. All I would advise is this. Keep a firm grasp on your weapon, and give it your all. Any less. And you may just lose your life. <sighs> I believe we can end things here. It's not often that we get to enjoy the company of guests, after all. We wouldn't want things to get too out of hand. <coughs> <coughs> Brother, are you all right? Linny. Given that I am the victor of this duel, as agreed, the punishment stands. No. I never thought things would end like this. However, everyone involved in the duel demonstrated a remarkable level of strength and determination. In light of this, I'm prepared to change the method of execution. Elwar, the bottled flames I gave you for safekeeping. Do you still have them? E yes I wasn't sure what they were for, but I've kept them super safe. I didn't lose a single one. Wonderful. Then, in just a moment, I'll have you administer them. Bottled flames? Indeed. They're the product of a secret experiment. Under certain special circumstances, flames can be extracted from my person and preserved. Once ingested, searing pain will spread across every inch of your body. No harm will come to you physically, but your memories will be burned away. If you can withstand the pain, when you awake... You'll have forgotten everything you know about the House of the Hearth, and will be expelled from the organization. In other words, administering this concoction will kill the version of you that grew up in the house, and give you a new identity. Memory is a mysterious thing indeed. Losing a portion of your memories will alter your sense of self. So, you're just letting us go, Father? You misunderstand. Memories are extremely important. Once consumed by flame, the version of you standing before me will die, and our secrets will die with you. So no, I don't intend to just let you go, because the person who survives will be nothing but a stranger. Even so, even so... <laughs> I won't have to live in fear anymore. I'm sorry, Father. I'm sorry I let you down. But I... I really... Don't cry, Filial. You haven't left the house yet, so there are still rules to be followed, yes? Remember what I taught you. Anger makes you impulsive, sorrow causes you to waver. Don't let yourself be controlled by your emotions. Of course. I'll remember. Dry your tears, and go pursue the life you really want. Yes, yes Father. Father. Chapleau, Foltz, Elwar, take them back to Poisson. And bring Lenny and the others as well. I prepared three extra vials of bottled flames. As for whether to take them, the choice is yours. Goodbye, children. The next time we meet, I will no longer be your father. Thank you for all you've done for the house. I hope you have bright futures ahead of you. Father. Let's go. Here, grab my arm, Lenny. I'll help you walk back. Thank you. Claire V. Can we talk now? I've been waiting for a super long time. You really are, Perry, aren't you? I haven't seen you in so long. How come you're all grown up? 
Wait, did I somehow travel to the future on accident? Or am I dreaming? Oh, what a long dream. Neither. You died, Claire V. That's what happened. You could have at least sugarcoated it a little. Look, she said speechless. Uh, oh. Okay, then. Huh? That's it? You accepted it just like that? Yep. If that's what Perry says happened, then I believe her. Perry wouldn't lie to me. Plus, I don't really need to know why I'm like this. I'm more curious about what happens in the future. If you're a harbinger now, Perry, that means Mother is gone, isn't she? Can you tell me about it? I want to know what happened to her. And to me. You never stopped trying to defy fate. At first, no one believed you. You could only vent your frustrations to the moon. In fact, you often sought comfort in the night sky. You wanted to see the aurora, so one night we promised each other we would go to Snezhnaya to see it together. Later on, you tried to run away, but you were brought back each time. Mother spared your life, but it wasn't out of kindness. Instead, she decided to make an example of you by slowly torturing you over time. That way, the other children would know what happens to traitors. Still, you never gave up. Mother hoped that through ruthless duel after ruthless duel, she would be able to crown an ultimate victor among the children she raised. But you called on everyone to unite, to fight to a draw in order to reduce casualties. Your efforts may have only delayed the inevitable, but still. You gave them hope. You tried everything you could think of, but every attempt ended in failure. Still, you never turned your sword on Crucibina, and you never turned it on me. On that gloomy day, you told me, For the last sixteen years of my life, I've done everything I can to fight for freedom. But now, I realize that the only freedom I truly possess is the freedom to choose to die. I never imagined I would say something like that. I must have been feeling really worn down. But somehow, I still think I understand. According to Mother's plan, only one of us was going to make it until the end. And I always hoped that person would be you. If I could do it all over again, I still don't think I would make a different choice. Even when I first met you, I knew you'd be able to do what I couldn't. Is that so? Even now, I'm not sure I truly understand what kind of freedom you were trying to pursue. But as the head of the House of the Hearth, and as the children's father, I've tried to give them the most basic of freedoms. The freedom to choose their own fate. It's something I discussed with the Udex of Fontaine. The children who want to leave the house will have their memories wiped clean of all secrets pertaining to the organization. In return, they will be allowed to live a normal life in Fontaine without being prosecuted for their past. Of course, I won't simply hand freedom to them on a silver platter. They have to fight for it and prove themselves worthy of it. Only freedom that is earned has true value. That's more than enough. That's exactly the kind of life I was fighting for. You know, Perry, I think you're a pretty amazing king, and a really great father, too. I'm really happy that you're the one who took over the house. I guess I do have one regret, though. I still haven't seen the outside world. Well, it just so happens that our dear guests over here have been to many nations and traveled to countless places. Perhaps they would be willing to tell you what the outside world is like. Really? Of course! We've traveled all over the place! We've got so many stories, we could probably talk your ears off for three days straight! You know, I used to dream of being a bard. Playing the lute while singing into the winds of freedom? <laughs> Even if there was no one there to listen, 
I would have continued to sing no matter what. Ah, that's where Mora comes from. I never knew that before. If I had some Mora, I would buy three new dresses. One for me, one for Perry, and one for Mother. It's just too bad Perry doesn't like wearing dresses. And Mother? Well, she probably wouldn't accept something like that either. Hey, <laughs> I guess I'd just have to keep them all for me then. I could wear a different one every day. Those yokai you mentioned, what do they look like? I once saw a drawing of this one guy with horns on his head and a super scary face. Are there any yokai like that? Oh, sounds like you're talking about an oni. Yep, we've met one, and let Paimon tell you, they're not nearly as scary as they look. I was always too afraid to skip Mother's fighting lessons. But at the academia, I bet you could do all sorts of secret things in class. Things that have nothing to do with studying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Being able to study whatever you want without having to fear for your life actually sounds pretty great. The situation was super dangerous. Lenny and Lynette were accused of committing a crime, and they were going to have to stand trial at the Opera Epiclès. Oh no. That must have been hard for all of you. What happened next? Don't worry. We were able to turn the situation around super quickly. Ah, thanks to Detective Paimon, of course. <laughs> How'd you do that? Come on, tell me. <clears throat> okay, so it was like this. After the failed magic show, we rushed to the scene and... Shadows don't have the capacity to learn or grow. Any new information they encounter is quickly forgotten over time. Clairvy. She left so soon, Paimon didn't even get to finish her story. I also have certain sentiments left unsaid. I wanted to tell her that the aurora I saw in Snezhnaya was just as beautiful as the ones in the pictures. But a shadow's memories reset at dawn. Had we delayed any longer, we wouldn't have had the time to say goodbye. Whatever regrets may linger, let them be lost to the coming of a new day. Father? <coughs> it's Linny! Hey, Linny! What is he doing back here? Let's go check it out. Father, the bottled flames have been administered. Filial and the others have left the house. And you? What have you decided? <clears throat> Thank you for giving us that choice, Father. But we never wanted to leave the house. It's the only home we've ever known. Lynette and Fremenet feel the same way. They're recuperating back at the Hotel Bouffe d'Ete. But I decided to come back and tell you where we stood. I'm sure you're well aware of the expectations I have for you. I want you to follow in my footsteps and become the next king of the house. Yet you seem to have different ideas. I must admit, I'm rather surprised by your decision to stay. There's nothing wrong with choosing to live a quiet life. Leading this organization is a heavy responsibility. One not so easily carried by someone forced onto the throne. I just never understood what you saw in me. What made you believe I was deserving of that throne? You're brave, talented, and most importantly, you cherish your family. You would do anything to protect them, even if it costs you your life. <laughs> Speaking up back there was so brave of you, Linny. It's all thanks to you that we were able to convince Father to back down. You're a hero, Linny. Hero? Father is the real hero. Had Father gone all out during the duel, there's no way I would have walked away with my life. She must have had it all planned from the beginning, 
from the very moment she suggested a duel. I'm not deserving of that title. I'm not strong enough or smart enough. You're wrong. In my opinion, all you need to be deserving of the throne is conviction and the necessary strength to act on it. We may have different ideas of what it means to be a family, but you can hardly be said to lack conviction. What you truly lack is strength. For someone of your talent, though, that's something that will come with time. Even without that strength, you still chose to face me in a duel, even though the odds were stacked against you. That capacity to honor your convictions is what I truly see in you. Father. No one knows what the future holds, what tragedy or triumph may be in store. Being at the head of this organization requires the strength of will to face whatever comes. Caution will only hold you back. If reaching a certain standard were required to go after what you want, I would never have succeeded in killing my predecessor. Back then, there was still a considerable gap between our abilities. Strength may decide the ultimate victor, but those who let a lack of strength dictate their decisions or undermine their convictions will never be worthy of the throne. I understand, Father. Thank you. Children must grow up to surpass their parents. Only then can a family continue to flourish. The road ahead is not an easy one, so I'll ask you one last time. Are you certain you want to stay? You've done so much for me, Father, and that kindness must be repaid. Plus, with Project Stuja at hand, there are many dangers ahead, and I, for one, don't intend to back down. Protecting my family at all costs, that's my conviction. Then you're welcome to stay. As for Project Stuja, you need not be too concerned. If those cowardly businessmen and heartless dignitaries try to take us down, I'm prepared to teach them a lesson. Having members who longed for the light was our organization's last weakness. With those members no longer among our ranks, the House of the Hearth is like a spider hiding in the shadows. We need only wait for our prey to come to us. At present, our imperative is to use their plan to our advantage. In doing so, a crimson moon shall rise amid the frigid blizzards of winter. No demonstration of loyalty shall go unrewarded, and no sacrifice shall be in vain. As for the two of you, whether we meet again as friend or foe, I'll remember the camaraderie we shared in this moment. No matter how arduous the journey ahead, I hope we both reach our desired destination. Lynette? Fremine, how are you feeling? Much better. Whew, what a relief! What about you? Are you feeling all right? I knew you'd come out unscathed. Us, on the other hand, well, we've been bedridden for two days. I couldn't even turn over. Oh, and I wanted to ask, is Claire V... Gone? Linny and the other members have left Poisson and returned to the House of the Hearth. According to him, there haven't been any more sightings of a spirit roaming the house. I see. I'm glad. Father came to check up on us two days ago and told us about what happened with Crusabina and Claire V. Actually, I... I've met Crusabina before. Wait, what? You've met the former knave? Crucibina died a year after Claire V. It was during the year between their deaths that I joined the House of the Hearth. Crucibina had an extremely cruel and radical way of doing things. While she was alive, the atmosphere in the house was suffocating. When I joined, though, the experiment she valued so much had already come to an end. And all the people involved, dead and injured alike, were gone. Crucibina never talked about the past with us newcomers. 
A couple of months after I joined, Father killed Crucibina and burned all her files. With that, the names of all the people subjected to her experiments, Claire V included, were lost to the flames, along with the painful memories they represented. Father took in Lenny and me a couple months after that, but she never mentioned anything about Crucibina or Claire V. Hmm. It really seems like something she was planning to keep to herself. The last time you talked to her, did she mention why she kept it a secret for so long? She said she didn't want us to be affected by the darkness of the past. She was worried we'd develop a false sense of gratitude towards her if we knew about it. The foundation of a family should be free of any corrupting influence. Whatever happened in the past, it has nothing to do with who we are now. And that's what Father told us in the end. But I still thanked her for everything. It was only after hearing about what Crucibina did that I finally realized how insignificant our lives could have been. The members of the house meant nothing to her. To say that she valued them in any way, even just as a tool, would probably be giving her too much credit. If Father hadn't taken over the House of the Hearth, I probably would have already. Father rarely brings up the fact that she saved us. She doesn't believe that being indebted to her should be what ties us together. But even if we didn't owe her anything, we would still choose to stay. Because this is our home. We may have arguments or times when we feel wronged. Some people may even choose to leave. But... As long as Father is here, we will always have a home. Whether the path before us is bathed in sunlight or shrouded in shadow, we'll follow Father wherever she chooses to go. So I wanted to say thank you for helping us make it through this crisis. Without your help, we could have lost a lot more along the way. Oh, we didn't do anything, really. Of course. You're welcome anytime. Are Filio and Nantoy okay? I actually saw them at a cafe this morning. They didn't recognize me. From what I could tell, they were drinking coffee and talking about one of the operas that started running recently. They seemed happy. If I had to take a guess, I would say they finally found the kind of life they always wished for.